Man, as well, welcome back to the shop. Just, just sit there. Right. So a guy sent me a, a message on YouTube in the comments. He sent me a comment. He, fuck me. He, and there's a comment where this guy was asking me a question. He says, how come pistons which move up and down have anything to do with the balance of a crankshaft and its weight, which, is ro which are rotating, and its weights which are rotating? Very good question. So we can use, what's that bloody bird called again? I can't fucking remember. So, um, let's just talk about the crankshaft. So let's just get rid of the, this is the beauty of this little thing. Let's just talk about the crankshaft. Wow. So, <laughs> uh, if you just had a crankshaft, and we're going to do a cross section of this, so let's just say you had a, cr a crankshaft and some webs and another little radius there and another web, and it comes down to here and another radius there. If we just had this, which some old school engines used to be like this, right? If you just had a system like this where this is your crank centre. Your center of rotation so this is just your axis right there like that and then this is the center of your crank pin let's just fill these in so it makes a bit more sense like this and this is your crank pin this the center of the center of mass for this so if we look at it from end on we've got a crank pin there we've got our we're just touching there we've got our main journal there this is our main journal, this is our crank pin, and then just so we've got our webs look like this. This is our centre of rotation, so that's our centre of rotation. There, right in the middle. Which means that as this wings round, you've got, it's like a, it's a crank handle, and you've got a whipping moment, and your mass is basically swinging round here. Now the centre of mass of this will probably be here in the middle, like this, let's just say the crank pin and main journal are the same diameter. Apart from, it'll be slightly off shifted because you've got all this bulk here and nothing here to counteract that. If you then whiz this around, you are going to get basically a, a, a vibration. It's, it's just going to vibrate, it's going to oscillate up and down. But it's actually going to oscillate in a circle, it's going to go, you know what I mean? And why don't we want this? We don't want this because. Um, your, bet, your crankshaft is floating in a sense, it is um, floating in oil fed bearings. So if you've got this oscillation, this vibrating oscillation that just goes round and round and round and round, a little concentric, you know, an eccentric wobble that goes around the rotational centre, which is this bit here. Um, basically, your oil pressures are going to be all over the place and if you have a long crankshaft like this, you're then going to have, instead of Instead of a, 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 a wobble, a wobble like this, that's just randomly like this, along this end, you're going to get a bend and it's going to oscillate. It'll be like a standing wave. So you'll get this oscillation. So the whole thing will start going like this and it's all fucking horrible. This is before we even put a conrod on it and go bang. The, the problem with that is it's asymmetrical. So on the upstroke, so when the piston goes up, Let's put this back together quickly. When the piston goes up like this, it's throwing weight up, so this pulls the crankshaft up. When we go down, it chucks the crankshaft down. When we kick out like this, it kicks the crankshaft out. When we kick out like that, it kicks the crankshaft out. So you have this whole wobble, but it'd be okay if it was just a, a nice, smooth, sinusoidal wave of a wobble, you know, so if it looked like if the wobbles just wobble, 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 like that, because we could put a balancer shaft in or something like that, and we could basically just counteract that. The problem is, is we've got loads of asymmetry here. When you go bang on your power stroke, there's a lot more force pushing the crankshaft down. So instead you'll get a wobble, wobble, and then you'll get a wobble like this, you'll get a big one. And then there's asymmetry everywhere. So when we push up on the exhaust stroke, there's exhaust gases resisting your push up. 
but then when we when we fall down and basically create a vacuum there's a pressure on the underside here but the pressure of the crankcase and the pressure pushing against hot exhaust gases are two different things because you've opened a valve here this has got a crankcase they're all slightly different and then when you do that when you look at that you'll have uh, a boom here then you'll have a little weird one here then you'll have a higher one here and basically you've just got this horrible um, set of frequencies that are all over the place you know what I mean? It's just, oh, fucking hell. It's just shaking like a shitting dog. And shaking and stuff like that, vibration stuff, it rattles bolts loose. It basically puts things out of alignment. Things start to move when things vibrate. Sound is generated, blah, 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 blah. You know, the whole bike shakes. It's also a comfort thing at the end of all of that. Uh, but mechanically, you can increase wear by having everything wobble because everything's not concentric it's it's side loading and it's doing this and it's a random motion the bearings go can you fucking behave yourself because they're getting battered randomly all over the place so what we do is is what you can do is you've got your same thing here with your crank pin like that what we do is we add a bit of mass down here like this not entirely like this you could literally just come up and have some weights in the bottom so instead of looking like that it'd look more like this so the black pen there if you can see that make the lines thicker so you can see that i don't know because some people some people a lot of people watch on the phones nowadays so you can't see fucking tiny screens so that would be the extremities of it. So these wings, in a sense, are cut off. And then basically what you're trying to do there is this is just in relation to the crank pin. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to balance this out by having the same mass on the other side at the same distance. So you're adding mass here, and this mass here, in a sense, cancels out this mass here. You know what I mean? And you could put a little step on it if you want. That happens sometimes, stuff like that. Basically, you just try and balance the weight out. So now... It, it's it, you know it's quite calm it basically just spins away i can feel this wobbling because there's a hell of a lot more mass in here than there is at the top so you can't see it but yeah it wobbles a bit and that's basically because you've got this mass on this side then this side then top top to bottom isn't so so much of a deal side to side is the problem this is again before we've even incorporated a conrod and a piston so oh fucking hell when we start to do that, this is why you start to see shapes like that, where you can the Ducati cranks have opted for kind of like this, jobby like this. They're trying to increase the mass down here. Or you can have your, you know, kind of like that, which is kind of like a bell-shaped crank, stuff like that. Now, these are all primary vibrations and secondary vibrations or second harmonics and blah, 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 nodes and stuff. We'll get you all into that. But... Because this was a simple question, you know, we'll give it a simple answer. The piston going up and down is a mass that is going this way. So it doesn't matter about the dynamics so much. When it goes this way, we want to counteract that. It's like a boxer engine that pushes out like that. You know, it's like if you lean over to do something, you'll stick your leg out of your back like that to try and counterbalance, to basically match your weight to balance you. Otherwise, you'll just fucking fall over. Guys going across, you know, them idiots who go across tight ropes and stuff with a, you know, with a stick and all the rest. It means they've got little mass out here, but they can tweak this instead of moving their large mass. But that's something completely different. But anyway, so when this goes up, you want the extra mass that you've added um, to your, 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 your crankshaft webs to go down. And forces mass times acceleration. It's forces that move things. So we've got our mass here going down and we've got our piston going up. And these cancel out, hopefully, <laughs> if it's done properly. So you're trying to cancel that out. When you go the other way and the piston comes down, you want your mass to basically throw it in the middle like that. So this mass comes up and this mass comes down to meet each other. So basically these are now going towards each other. And if you literally, if you say this was 200 newtons up there, 200 newtons 
of force, then this would have just say 200 newtons of force, depending on the, the distance and stuff, we'll get into all that. But you get what I mean, you're trying to go like for like forces. So again, if you're going 200 newtons this way and 200 newtons this way, this cancels out, this cancels out, this cancels out, this cancels out. So everything just stops vibrating. Absolutely fantastic. The problem, the real problem, we'll get a lot more into this and we'll actually do some of the calculations and stuff. The real problem is when everything, it's that fucking 90 degree bullshit again. Such a pain in the ass. The real problem is here, is at there. That's the real problem. Because your piston is starting to go down, which means it has an acceleration of mass going that way. But for our mass on our flywheel, uh, on our, our webs on our crankshaft and our crank pin, so our crank pin out here like this. Well, this has been thrust out this way. It's actually going that way, kind of like that. But you can see that these don't interact or cancel out. Same on the other way, when the piston's going up like this, it's the same thing, it's going out like this. Crank pin's throwing its weight that way, like so. These two, if the, the problem is, is you can't balance a crankshaft. If you balance a crankshaft perfectly on its own, then when you add the piston, when the piston goes to the top, and the crank comes to the bottom, the, the heavy mass isn't the same, they're not equal because you've just balanced just your conrod, uh, just your crankshaft. The other problem is, is this fucking conrod because its mass shifts everywhere. The big end, the small end just basically goes up and down. The arm of the rod and the, the basically the bottom, the big end of the rod, this follows this circular pattern, which means that this rod in here is in a funny position at any moment. It's more, when you're going like this, when you're going like this, it's more, most of its mass is going up. When you go like this, it's mostly coming down. When it's doing this at the side, it's kind of going out. It's just fucking horrible. This is why we have not only balancer shafts, something that's on the Z900 and the H2R, um, which we'll do a separate video about because that's actually quite interesting, especially the H2R because it's got two weird little balancers, one in a really weird location. But anyway, um, this is the problem. These are your secondary balances and stuff like that. It's basically, we are trying to um, balance out the greatest forces. So the greatest forces are where the maximum acceleration is. The maximum acceleration is here on the way up like this. This is the maximum acceleration. And that's what I was saying in the other video about it's, it covers a lot more distance, a lot more displacement there than it does from there. You know what I mean? So when I, saw, when I was talking about the video, that's one of the problems. So now we've got asymmetry just in the geometry of things, all to do with triangles and stuff, is that on the way up, your forces are higher than they are on the way down. So there's just a, basically an asymmetry here. You know, there's just no fucking balance there whatsoever. And it's all fucking horrible. This is why all engines vibrate. This is why, you know, no matter how much they try, engines vibrate. This was one of the benefits of Wankels. It wasn't the fact that Wankels don't vibrate, because they fucking do. It's the fact that Wankels, um, basically they have a lower amplitude, so their vibrations are a lot lower, which means they're easier to balance out. The reason why is if you've got a lot lower amplitude, and amplitude is like frequency and amplitude very quickly are like your speakers, yeah? So the frequency is you can have a low frequency, so you're like this, or you can have a high frequency, which I can't really do. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, which I can't really do. Dripping. You have low frequencies and high frequencies, and on your wave or any vibration or anything like that, it's anything basically just repeating. Frequencies are like this, that's high frequency, and low frequency is like this, you know. And the amplitude is like an amplifier. It's how high these peaks are, yeah? So basically, more power, it's more power it's more power is your amplitude. That's why you have an amp. If you have a guitar, it sounds fucking wank. You put it in an amp, it juices that signal up so you can hear it. It basically makes it louder. 
With vibrations, it's the same kind of thing. The amplitude of a vibration is to do with how much stuff is, you know, the force is involved. So they're directly linked to each other. Um, where the frequency is just how, you know, your frequency is basically your RPM. So at 1000 RPM versus 10,000 RPM, you know, it's an order of magnitude of increase from um, you know that low frequency to that high frequency. This is why Formula One engines and motor GP engines sound like they do because the fucking engines are going like crazy, and why lorries and trucks just drug 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 because the frequency is low. Drug 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 So you can actually convert RPM into hertz and stuff like that. Drug 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 drug. Um, so the amplitude, because we've got these pistons like this, and this is the problem with big strokes, and this is why diesels sit there and chug away, is because if you have a long stroke, then the forces are quite high because you are going a long way and then trying to stop that. So you're going from here to up the top, and the longer that is, the more of a throw you have on that, the higher amplitude your forces generally are going to be, so the higher the amplitude of your vibrations. If you have something like a wankel that's kind of spinning and oscillating, but it's only wobbling out of centre a bit because of its mass, it's only wobbling a bit, it can be still the same frequencies, but it's a lot lower amplitude, so the forces involved are lower. And how do we balance these things out? Well, generally, it's just like a, a PlayStation control. If you have an electric little dickhead electric motor with an eccentric weight on it, so a weight on one side, and you spin that, the whole thing will vibrate, or just like in your phone or something like that. You know, where that's the center and it's got an offset mass that spins and that makes a vibration. So some balancer shafts and stuff like this, and some balancer shafts in uh, engines are not just there for just primary balancing and stuff like that. They're actually just generally engine vibrations, which is what the H2R's got, and the Z900. Um, Basically what you can do is you can, if you have a vibration on a graph kind of thing, if you look at the amplitude and the frequency, if you've got this and your engine's vibrating like this, and it's never like that because like I say these things are, there's a load of asymmetry involved and stuff like that, if you can then create a wave that looks like this, then your vibration will equal zero. You know what I mean? It basically just cancels it out. Only if it's in plane, though. We've got to be very. That's also another problem. We're trying to get the trying to get the counterbalance to be in the correct plane or the plane that you really care about, and that basically denotes where you want to stick your balancer shaft. So, for a uh, wankel, you can use a lot lighter weight that you have to rotate, and that you know the inertia of that, the rotational inertia of that, draws power. Um, so if you you know you have a counterweight that's a lot lighter, and on wankles they usually have two rotors and then a little counterweight at that end, and that's pretty much it. It's done. Where with motorbikes and stuff like that, you look at uh, the ER5. It has the two the two uh, throws for the crankshaft, and then it has a massive balancer shaft that weighs like three three kilos or something. It's not pissing around. Do you know what I mean? And that is weight they have to carry around. That's energy you have to draw that draws from the bike when you accelerate. Stuff like that, you know. And it's cost as well, you know. So it's just one of those things. We're going to talk some more about this, why it's important, um, some of the things to mitigate it. We're going to talk about uh, rotational inertia and angular momentum, stuff like that, because that's quite important. We're also going to look at some MotoGP crankshafts because they that is a very good example of a way you can have a light crankshaft but also keep the um, rotational, uh, angular momentum and rotational inertia quite high. Well, the angular, uh, uh, rotational inertia quite high. Hope that makes sense. I'm spitting everywhere. And I'll see you in a bit. Drug, 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 drug.